everyone, Alexandra here. So today we are looking over Adobe Creative Cloud Express, which is a revamped version of Adobe Start. Now the tool is set to be a Canva competitor. And with regards to a lot of the features, they are actually super similar to Canva. So literally anyone can use this tool. And that's really the point behind it. Now, as you'll see, there's a couple of features that are still kind of slow, which was the case with Adobe Spark to begin with. Now, just when you start the tool right off the bat, you have a couple of options, including choosing from some templates for like different types of content. So if you want to create, for example, an album cover, you can click on it and then on the left side of the screen after this loads you will get a bunch of templates to choose from and start your designs with now going back to our main screen something else you will find useful is just the custom size option here at the top where you can just like kind of select a size you want or go through multiple standard formats and then scrolling down something that Canva doesn't really have, at least in this way, is this quick actions feature that helps you, for example, convert something you have like a video into a GIF, merge videos, trim a video straight away. Again, all of these are available. I mean, most of them in Canva. But the process is essentially different, so to say. Again, you can also just like choose from popular templates and scroll through these to find what works best for you. You can also integrate it with other tools in the Adobe Creative Cloud stack, including Photoshop Express. Again, this is different from the Creative Cloud Express, formerly known as Adobe Spark. And just on the left side, you will have a bunch of things like, you know, projects so that you can collaboratively work on these branding features so that you can just like add your brand logo color font in here libraries you might want to go to public libraries to actually see some um, of the collections so to say others are using in terms of just icons illustrations this is not yet up to par with whatever expectations you have but Maybe in the future it will be developed a bit. And to help you get started, there is a lot of tutorials. Now we are actually going to create our first design by going here. And I'm simply going to opt for a Instagram post. Now you can search through these templates for something like flower. And all of these templates essentially have tags associated with them. So you can just like choose one of the free ones in here, for example, this one. And the editing process is super simple. You can just click on elements like this text to change them. Now, there are some UX issues in terms of how this tool works. For example, if you select this element, you don't really have kind of this like surrounding square rectangle to highlight what you've selected and it's the same for the background so for example now if this loads i've selected the background so to say to change it i need to go to select an image like this one and hopefully this is going to work for you because sometimes the usability on this again is not really the best so definitely canva does excel in terms of how easy it is to use the tool now again we have our templates we have our text options which is essentially super similar to any other tools and you have like these custom styles for the text including paragraphs some phrases and so on that's just like fun to use so for example you can go on this delete it from here and then I'm going to add something else like this text format, click on it, and I want to center it using these purple lines that you see. So this is a nice touch for anyone who does not want to waste time with getting the exact sizing. Again, you have your photos in here, which you can also just go to your library, create a library, and add your own assets from here so that you can add your own images essentially 
And also another option is to just go to photos, click on upload photo, and again, add your images in here so that you can reuse your own images. Then something else is you can just simply use, for example, icons. So this is super handy because right now Canva's library of resources is just super full of different resources like icons and illustrations that people create. So this is kind of how Canva thrives because they have this expensive resources library. But if you go to Adobe right now, there's like fewer of those. So it's a bit easier to kind of manage handling these. So for example, if you want an icon, let's say for a wedding, again, you will find a bunch of stuff in here to center it. You have your editing options here on the right side of the screen. And you can also go to design assets, which is essentially like illustrations, shapes, things like that. Again, this is right now maybe not as good as the resources Canva has because they haven't really got maybe such an extensive database of artists that could contribute to this. So let's say we want just something like related to a wedding actually there's not a lot of things right now going on here but let's just work with what we have as soon as this loads again it can take some time for this to work anyway this design definitely doesn't look very well but what i wanted to point out and kind of where this tool excels is just the layer options like you know normally with a tool like Affinity Designer or just regular Photoshop, Illustrator, you would have your layers kind of like in here with just like artboards and groups of elements and so on. And it's really a bit more difficult to manage for someone who's maybe not a designer because there's just like a lot of elements. And especially since this example here is an illustration and every single thing on the image is really a small element but with the express tool from adobe you have your layers kind of listed out very intuitively like one on top of each other so for example you can move let's take this example of the illustration that's right now on top of the text you can just move it below the text and again, you will have your text on top of the illustration. And it's just like super simple to visualize everything in here. This might get a bit more tough to manage once you have like 50 elements on top of your design. But since we are not building illustrations, this is really not an issue for our use case. Now, some other options in here are just like choosing backgrounds. Some of them are super fun to use. If you noticed, just pulling the image on top of our design allows us to choose if we want to make it a background image or just move it around. And notice right now I have essentially two background images. I can literally just kind of pull them like this. I can click on the background here and really just press delete, delete content, and you will end up with this, but you can also delete this so that you actually have your background image, like just one image. Now, other options include just like adding your logo on top of this. And again, you have your libraries, any help here at the top that you might need. And what's super interesting is all of the features you have here on the right hand side of the screen. So for example, you have your colors, which is essentially like a color palette. So you can just choose any color palette and the colors or the color scheme, so to say, get added on top of the image you have. Then we have the animation option, super handy for multiple stuff. For example, you can animate your text, your photos. So for instance, I can select the typewriter effect and the image just instantly gets changed into that. And I actually have a bunch of options for this as well. So you only have a couple of options for now, but it's like definitely super handy and interesting to use. Then again, your background option. 
resizing this is a paid feature like in canva as a matter of fact and the design option which is if you remember what adobe spark was like you would get kind of these templates in terms of like color fonts and so on so for example if i select this yellow one right here you'll notice the layout is kept and any text or images i had before gets added within this format in here so this is like an extra touch compared to what canva has but it essentially works just like templates so for example if i go to templates now and choose this or actually i'm going to choose a free version of course and i'm going to click create from this template I get essentially a completely different design that doesn't keep my text and images like the design option would. And to really find my previous design, I'm going back to my project and you'll find the design here at the top. So not much of an issue when it comes to this. Now I briefly want to also show you kind of some video options so to say so for example you can go to just like trim a video that you have and this is super helpful because this is free so otherwise you would have to use like either shady tools or whatever you already have on your device but the point is to just like go put your video in here this is sponsored by adobe premiere so it should work pretty well but it's just like the basics really I recommend you use the end time here and the start time to get the exact timing. And this is just super handy if you have something like super simple you need. Again, there is a bunch of other features in here, including just like changing the speed of a video and a lot of other options essentially. Super fun to use, super interesting, definitely you know it's free it's easy to use it's most of the time these tools tend to be a bit slow so it really depends on the size of your video essentially and it's just super fun if you want to for example just do basic edits from you know speeding up a video to trimming it and so on but you can also always just go to the video part add a title in here, whatever. This is not very creative, but yeah. And the tool essentially pulls from Adobe Spark. So you have some templates in here. Again, they haven't worked too much on this because it's still as slow and not super fun to use, just like Adobe Spark was. So we're going to wait a bit. And the editor for this is basically the same as you had it in Adobe Spark. I have a bunch of tutorials on this on my channel if you want to learn more about how to use Adobe Spark, which is really the same thing you see right now. Something else that's interesting is you can create something like a collage or a web page. And again, the web page feature is something that made Adobe Spark stand out. But again, I'm not going through this because I do have a tutorial on this. Now, if you enjoyed this video and if it made you try Adobe Creative Cloud Express, the longest name ever for a tool, so maybe just call it Spark, definitely a better name. If you enjoyed this, feel free to subscribe, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next video. Enjoy your day, everyone, and take care.